Let's look at lab on SSL and TLS. So these are used to create what's called a secure socket, uh, where the server identifies itself to us with this digital certificate. We then uh, negotiate a key or an encryption method, and the client generates a key, sends it back to the server, encrypted with its public key, and then that the key that they use will then be shared. Okay, so it's used to create secure communication. So let's have a look at an example SSL connection. And here we are. Okay, so uh, the client in this case is 0 0.20. And the server is 6621169.66. The port that we're using here is 443 on the server. 443 is encrypted web or HTTPS. The port that we're using is 2099. The website that's been accessed, we can do an NS lookup on that IP address. on 66.211.169.66 uh, it doesn't actually exist so it may, may have changed nope, so we can't determine it from the IP address Uh, but one way we can determine it is to look at the TCP stream and with inside the TCP stream we should see the digital certificate and there it is there's our cipher and if we look in here then hopefully we should be able to find the site which this is securing Somewhere. There we go. PayPal Incorporated. Okay, so the certificate is coming from PayPal. And the organization who signed the certificate, we could see when we looked at the stream that this was a very signed certificate. And there's this, the website for it. And can we read the encrypted stream? Uh, the short answer is no. So there it's there. This is web page, so we can see we can't really read that at all. Okay, so the next thing to do is to go to google.co.uk. Which is this one. And then when you do the same thing, uh, go through the traffic, you should be able to determine the details that are actually defined in there. Next thing is that we'll have a look to see what the certificate is on our connection. And in this case we can actually determine who was the issuer. Uh, a few things about the encryption method that's used, uh, the size of the encryption key, 2048, and a key one, or an important one, is the expiry date of the certificate. And the expiry date is 1408-2014. Very important that uh, we make sure that our certificate hasn't timed out. So have a look at PayPal, and you should be able to find that, uh, again, it will be encrypted as a default. And 
again we can have a look at the certificate when it expires who the issuer is very sign in this case and so on okay so if you continue through and then uh, you should be able to go to the other sites and we can see in this case this one isn't encrypted okay so, so go through the other ones and see if you can find out if they're encrypted or not